In a nuclear attack on this country, one of the greatest threats would be radioactive fallout. While heat and blast effects of even the largest bombs would have a definite limit, any area could be threatened by fallout. The large number of weapons which probably would be dropped in a full-scale attack would produce fallout, ranging from light to intense, over much of the nation. Weapons exploded close to the earth cause greatest fallout hazards. Thousands of tons of earth particles are drawn upward into the ascending mushroom cloud where radioactive products of the nuclear explosion contaminate them. These particles are carried by the high altitude winds for many miles. Eventually they settle to earth and this is called radioactive fallout. We are all subjected to radiation from outer space and from radioactive material of the earth's crust. We're exposed to it when the doctor x-rays us and on many other occasions. Radiation in small or controlled amounts like that are not dangerous. But in large amounts, the amounts produced by nuclear explosions, radiation can make you seriously ill or even kill you. Radiation produced by nuclear weapons presents a revolutionary threat to our country. In an enemy attack, it could become a direct threat to us all. Fortunately, there are means of protecting ourselves, means so effective that civil defense officials believe everyone can survive fallout if they take a few simple precautions to protect themselves. The biggest danger from fallout is the fact that the particles do not have to touch you to endanger you. Their deadly rays can penetrate any kind of material, but the material through which they pass absorbs part of the radiation and reduces the hazard. Your safety depends upon putting a sufficient mass between yourself and the fallout. Concrete, bricks, earth, or sand are the best, but in a pinch, any heavy material will do. Civil defense officials recommend that everyone prepare a shelter. In most areas of the country, you would receive ample protection in a basement shelter constructed of eight-inch concrete walls. This provides the same shielding as 12 inches of earth, 16 inches of books, or 30 inches of wood. To be certain of adequate protection, however, the shielding should be that equivalent of three feet of earth. Civil defense officials recommend that for the best fallout protection, your family have these two things, an approved fallout shelter and enough supplies to enable you to stay in it for a maximum of two weeks. Within that two-week period, it is estimated that community resources will have been restored to give you some help. A short time later, assistance should be available from the state and federal governments. Get started right away at protecting your family from fallout. Plans for approved shelters are available from your civil defense officials. Some of the shelters you can build yourself. The more elaborate models can be undertaken by a contractor. Let us look at five shelters developed by the Office of Civil and Defense Mobilization, any one of which will provide good fallout protection for your family. First, the basement concrete block shelter is specifically designed as a do-it-yourself project. The cost will vary according to your area but should range between $150 and $200 for materials. It would provide all the protection needed in most areas. You must be sure the shelter has the proper doorway, air vents, and ceiling beams capable of holding two layers of concrete blocks. 
plans for this shelter can be incorporated easily into new home construction. In all of these shelters, incidentally, you must be sure to use solid concrete blocks rather than the hollow variety. The hollow kind will not give adequate shielding unless they are filled with cement, sand, or earth. The second recommended shelter is the above-ground double wall shelter. It is an outdoor above-ground construction which also may be built with concrete blocks. It is ideal for regions where water or rocks make it impractical to build underground. Most people would want to hire a contractor to build it. Materials would cost about $700 plus the contractor's fee. Virtually absolute protection from fallout is furnished by the double wall construction with 20 inches of earth between and the 6 inch concrete ceiling covered with 20 inches of gravel. Third, the pre-shaped metal shelter made from pre-shaped corrugated metal sections or pre-cast concrete can be constructed either underground or above ground. This shelter is also suitable for regions where rock or water are close to the surface. When covered with three feet of earth and given a protected entrance, it also will provide almost absolute protection. The cost, like the double wall shelter, is about $700 plus the fee of a contractor who probably would be needed to build it. Number four, the underground concrete shelter can be built by a contractor for about $1,000 to $1,500, depending upon the type of entrance used. Plans are designed so that it can have either a stairway entrance, such as is shown here, or with a hatchway entrance. The shelter can be built with a roof at ground level and mounded over with earth, or it can be built below ground level or into an embankment. Last, the concrete basement shelter is similar to the underground concrete shelter, except that it is designed as an added room to the basement, either in an existing home or one under construction. The shelter would add about $500 to the cost of a new home and would give excellent fallout protection. In construction of any one of these shelters, four essential features must be completed. The first is a proper entrance. It must have at least one right angle turn. Radiation travels in straight lines and only a fraction of it is scattered by the air or materials it strikes. So the sharp turn adds to the shielding. The second necessity is ventilation. This is provided in a concrete block basement shelter by vents in the wall and the open entrance. A blower may be installed for added comfort. For the other shelters, vent pipes and a blower is essential for proper ventilation. Good radio reception is the next essential. The shielding will cut it down. As soon as the shelter is completed, Check the radio reception capabilities. It probably will be necessary to install an outside antenna to receive Conelrad broadcasts. Light is Dad's department. The Civil Defense Shelter booklet will show him how to fix a simple electrical system. This will furnish adequate low-level light if you have a spare battery. You will also want a flashlight or electric lantern for brighter light as needed. After your shelter is finished, you should stock it with the provisions and equipment you will need for a two-week stay. Since radiation outside may keep everyone inside, it is important that you have adequate supplies in your shelter. In choosing foods, place the emphasis on those which require no refrigeration and little cooking. Foods in cans or jars will stay in good condition six or more months if kept dry at a temperature between freezing and 70 degrees Fahrenheit. 
Goods in paper boxes may be kept for six months if they are stored in tightly closed metal cans under the same dry, moderate temperatures. Be sure they are in a spot where rodents and insects won't attack them. Plan meals so there will be no leftovers, thus eliminating the problem of rapid spoilage. Meat, poultry, fish, vegetables, fruit, and many other items can be purchased in suitable quantities for such planning. It is a good practice to rotate canned foods at least once or twice a year. Exchange those in unprotected paper boxes at least every three months. Don't forget foods for infants, elderly persons, diabetics, or others who might require a special diet. Be sure that you choose foods which fit the preferences of your family. Civil defense officials have sample menus showing the quantity of food which should be set aside for each person for two weeks. Use this as your guide. Water will also be an important item. You will need a minimum of one half gallon per day per person. It should be stored in clean containers, preferably jugs, bottles, or jars with tight-fitting covers. Water in your hot water tank may also be used if it is close to the shelter. The container should be cleaned and refilled at least once every three months to keep the water palatable. Water purification tablets should be on hand to treat water which might contain harmful bacteria. For cooking and serving, you will want one or two pans, disposable tableware, paper plates, cups, and napkins. Don't forget a measuring cup, can opener, and matches. You will also want a small cooking unit, which will use a minimum of oxygen. A battery-powered radio is essential to provide communications with the outside world. Store extra batteries in a dry, cool place. Check the reception periodically to be sure you can receive Conorad broadcasts. For cold weather, you will want lots of heavy clothing and warm bed clothes. In any weather, you will want some changes of clothing for all members of the family. A first aid kit will be very important. Your civil defense officials have a list of the basic first aid items you might need. You should also have a two-week supply of special medicines and equipment for the sick or chronically ill such things as insulin and hypodermic needles for diabetics. If you have a baby, remember to include powdered formula, canned milk, bottles, nipples and disposable diapers, pins, talcum, and so on. Provide sanitation supplies such as cans with tight-fitting lids for human waste and garbage, and a receptacle which can be used as a toilet. Don't forget such things as towels, toilet tissue, sanitary napkins, and soap. A 5% DDT solution will protect you from insects. Remember how hard it is to keep the children entertained on a rainy day? Maintaining a high morale in your shelter area will be even more difficult because of cramped quarters and monotonous surroundings. Appropriate religious articles, Books, games, and other amusements will help. You will also want miscellaneous equipment, such as a calendar, clock, and candles. A screwdriver, rubber gloves, and a shovel also may come in handy. More information on supplies and equipment, together with information on the approved fallout shelters, is contained in this booklet. Use it as your guide in planning and stocking your shelter. Now let's suppose for a moment that you can't get to a shelter in an emergency. What can you do to protect yourself? First, look for a basement. One below ground level will cut radiation to one-tenth of the level outside. The safest spot is in a corner which is least exposed to windows and deepest below the ground. 
If there is adequate warning, you can improve a basement's protection substantially by blocking the windows with bricks, dirt, books, magazines, or other heavy materials. If you are in a house with no basement, the best protection will be found on the ground floor in the central part of the house. The radiation there will be about half what it is outside. Large buildings such as apartment houses and office buildings afford excellent protection. With their thick walls and heavy floors, they provide almost as much shielding as the specially constructed concrete block shelter recommended for residences. If you have reason to believe you have fallout particles on your person or clothes, bathe thoroughly and leave the water outside the shelter. Outer garments also should be left outside and washed thoroughly before they are worn again. In washing exposed food or clothing, waterproof gloves should be worn. Fallout may be the primary threat which faces us in a national emergency, but keep in mind that it is a manageable threat. The right moves now will protect you and your loved ones later. You will need a good shelter and a two-week supply of food and water and other living essentials. If you have them ready and learn a few safety precautions, you and your family stand a first-rate chance of surviving any nuclear attack. Talk to your local or state civil defense officials immediately. They will give you detailed instructions on what you need to do. Then do it. Then you can rest assured that no matter what the fallout threat in the future, you and your family will be ready for it.